face attribute analysis like uh, head pose, glasses, blur, exposure, noise, occlusion, and bounding box. So that means what are the other parameters about the face? Okay, so that information will be extracted. Facial landmark location like nose, eyes, mouth, where these uh, where the nose is coming, where the eyes coming, where the mouth is coming, what is the eye color, all informations will come. Face comparison can be done, which means you can store the images of uh, an employee. For example, if I want to use uh, attendance management system using face API, so we can store the employee's photo in the service and train the model to recognize that face. Later, whenever the employee comes in front of the camera, it will capture a photo and then send it to the face API and compare with the photos in the database. So if the database has a similar image, then it will say that, okay, this employee belongs to this company or this department, it can go. Facial recognition and identification means from an image, it will be able to recognize or maybe from a, a video capture, it should identify the face and first of all, recognize the position of that uh, face and then we can identify the face of that particular person. Facial liveness, that means what are the different expressions and other things that, that the, uh, what we have in the face, okay? And what are the color, skin tones, everything we can identify, but it also requires special approval. So whenever we want to use face API, we can create it as a standalone face research, or we can go with the multi-service uh, AI service or multi uh, service account. So standalone, as we have discussed in uh, vision service, it can be only used for image analysis or specific purposes. Uh, similarly, face service is only used for face analysis purpose. Uh, but if you use multi-service Azure AI resource, it will be used for vision, face, language service, decision making and many other purposes. It's a multi-service model. Detected face identification. So how it is detecting the face and uh, uh, comparing the face. So first we have to uh, uh, store the images of uh, employees or the person's photo we need to be trained with the model and the model will assign the uh, uh, the a unique ID for the face. So inside the uh, face API, you need to first pass the image of an employee, and then it will be assigning an uh, image ID or face ID, you can say, to that image, and it will uh, learn that the attributes of that face and store into the database. Later, whenever we pass an image, it will be able to uh, compare with the images in the database and tell you that this is this particular person with this particular ID. So we need to create a person group for that because maybe you can create a person group based on department. So HR department employees will be going into one group and inside that we will be putting all the HR employees uh, photos or we will be storing all the HR employees uh, faces and each face will be getting a unique ID. It can be uh, used to compare faces <coughs> in multiple images like verify faces to determine if there are uh, same individual if they are same individual or find similar faces to identify faces with the similar face, uh, faces. That means like in our mobile applications, as you see, we can uh, uh, see immediately when we take a photo, 
okay when we, whenever we capture the photo immediately it will be tagging automatically means putting a rectangle uh, around the uh, face and if this person's image is already tagged then the, it will automatically tag that photo right so it's because this person's image is already tagged inside your mobile application persistent face recognition means you have to train the model face recognition model to detect the faces of that employees as i have mentioned you need to create a person group first and then add each and every person into that group like create a department group uh, department wise group like uh, or maybe admin role based groups like the admins faces will be in one group and uh, add all the admins into that particular group and every a person will have a unique id for their faces and then we will train the model so once we train the model it will learn and persist this face expressions and ids inside the database inside the database means is not using any relational database or uh, uh, no sql databases internally it uh, will have some storage mechanism it, it will be persisting those and face attributes there and whenever we upload an a uh, photo uh, of maybe a uh, same employee it will immediately recognize and tell you that oh yeah this is mr jan or this is mr uh, miss joe right so because this employee's photos are already inside it's a storage or inside it's a memory so whenever we upload a photo immediately it can tell yes i have compared this with the images i have and i found there is a similar face with this name so i can say this is mr uh, jan right face detection with the azure ai vision use face endpoint specifying the face as the visual feature so you can specify the feature Uh, type as face so that it will be able to extract the face uh, 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 detection features or of or face detection response will be returned from that so optional request parameters means what are the uh, other extra parameters you can pass is whether you want to return the face id or face landmark uh, uh, face attribute recognition model or uh, I means so you want to re, uh, return the recognition model what is used and the detection model which is used so face detection and face recognition so what are the models used you can tell that uh, to return so you can specify whether you want to return the face id face attributes face landmark and the models that is used to detect and recognize the faces so this is how we make a request so in the request url you will be making a request to the face api and calling the detect with the extra options options means what are the parameters you want to use inside the body request body you will be passing the url of that image and it returns a response in this format like a face rectangle then landmarks so in which of the uh, places it found the faces so because it's a face detection feature detecting the face with the ai vision service so that we have already shown the uh, morning session i have told you that this is the face so we can detect the faces like this right so if i select a photo or upload a photo it will tell you in which place it identified the face so if you want you can even upload a photo right so you can see it has correctly identified the faces in that image
custom vision which is another uh, model that is provided by azure ai vision services so previously the uh, we have discussed the vision service or simply computer vision service later we have discussed a face api which is primarily used to uh, detect the faces analyze the faces compare the faces and recognize the phrases so there are multiple things you can do with the face api now the third one is the custom vision api so what what is custom vision so um uh, custom vision service is required when we want to use our vision api model to go and uh, detect or classify the objects in a particular image because in certain scenarios uh, we cannot use the vision api that is computer vision api to detect the objects or recognize the objects in that image for example very simple use case i can say i want to build an application for a pet care system or pet care um, uh, hospital so what they are planning to do is customers can upload the image of a dog or some other cat or some other uh, pet and ask what are the treatments to be used or uh, what are the medicines to be given for that pet or what are the uh, vaccines to be used so you can just ask by uploading the photo you don't need to go and uh, uh, show the dog to the uh, pet care hospital means uh, means veterinary hospital you just you just need to upload the image of that pet so that the system will automatically tell you like if it is a bulldog okay these are the uh, food diet you have to follow if it is pomeranian you have to follow this food diet if it is uh, maybe um, some what to say dalmatian so it it's a food diet is different so different dogs or different type of cats or different type of other pets will have different different uh, uh, diet plans vaccines and other things so when you when you want to automate the thing you are expecting whenever the customer is uploading a photo of that particular uh, service or oh, sorry the for the of that particular pet the service needs to tell you that okay this is a bulldog and you have to give or you have to follow this particular uh, food diet okay or if you are uploading an image of a pomeranian i am expecting that the system has to tell okay this is a pomeranian so you can follow this diet but the problem with the computer vision or vision service is yes it is able to detect the dog yes it can tell that okay you have uploaded the image of a dog but which type of dog it may not be able to tell you maybe the most commonly available breeds it may be able to tell you okay this is an image of dalmatian or this is an image of pomeranian it can tell you but whenever it goes to some other type of dogs which is which may be available in specific areas or locations the model may not be able to tell you because it is simply say that okay this is a dog photo but which dog it cannot understand then we cannot depend on the computer vision to uh give the diet plan for this dogs right so what i am expecting is i want a service a vision service that is fully trained with all types of dogs so if i am uploading an image of bulldog or dog, pomeranian or dalmatian or maybe some other type of dog i don't uh, know the do names of dogs but any breed you upload even it is a dog breed which is available in only that particular country or area still if you upload that particular uh, 
uh, image, it, it should clearly tell that, OK, this is that particular image type or sorry, dog type. So you can follow this type plan. So how we will identify the particular image class or image category. I cannot use the pre-trained model, which is computer vision or vision service for that. So we have custom vision. What is the benefit of custom vision is it is uh, capable to uh, train the model. So we can train the model uh, by uploading the photos of uh, different types of dogs and we can tag them. Yes, I can upload 100 photos of Dalmatian and tell that, okay, these are Dalmatian's photos. We, I am uploading 100 types of uh, bulldog photos and will say, okay, these are bulldogs. And we can also upload different, different types of dogs and tag it. Later, we will train the model. So we use or we train the model and uh, 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 generate the result model. And this result model we can consume in our application. So whenever we upload an image to that model, it will tell you, OK, I understand this dog type and this is this particular category of dog. Right. So that is why we use custom vision. So custom vision's benefit is you can uh, train the model to uh, detect specific types of uh, objects or specific types of uh, dogs or specific types of other uh, what to say uh, uh, elements in that particular image so previously we have a custom vision dot ai portal through which we were doing this so if you see there are two approaches now so one previous approach or older approach is using custom vision dot ai which allow you to go and train the model like uh, if you go to custom vision dot ai you can log into this with your credentials and it's very simple process you just need to You just need to create a project and you can do either image classification or object detection means do you want to detect the different type of objects in that but uh, in that image or you want to create a model that can classify the objects in that image like a uh, dogs i when i upload an image of bulldog it want it, it needs to tell that this belongs to the bulldog class or when I upload the Pomeranian, it has to tell that this is Pomeranian type. So that is classification type. So classification and object detection are the two types which was supported by the older portal or customvisions.ai. But now if you see, instead of that, now we will use Vision Studio itself for custom training. because it uses it uses uh, uh, different models because if you use the custom vision dot ai it use an older uh, neural network approach called a convolutional neural network cnn but if you go to the vision studio it uses the transformer model which is multi model type to uh, train the model right so that means they use different types of neural network models for uh, image uh, classification and object detection. And in the older portal, we will be able to do image classification and object detection. But in the new portal that is in the Vision Studio, we are able to do image classification, object detection, and a product recognition. So from the shelf, we will be able to recognize the products so that we can do and we can do labeling in custom vision dot ai and for doing the labeling we can use aml studio that is azure machine learning studio or coco file if you want to 
label the images minimum training data needed so whenever you want to train on a specific category for example i want to train the model with a 10 uh, dog breeds because bulldog pomeranian or uh, dalmatian and other types so in every category minimum 15 photos i have to upload for training purpose so that is 15 is minimum required image for this but here in this uh, new portal two to five image per category is also sufficient okay that means this is more efficient which means you don't need to upload more data to get the accuracy even if you upload two to five photos it will be able to detect okay but more more images will give you more clarity but minimum is telling so minimum 15 is required in the older one but here minimum is two to five is fine more images if you upload it's better then training data storage the uploader uh, uh, uploaded to the custom vision service itself means the trained model data is used inside or stored inside the custom vision service but here the training data storage is in the blob storage of account because here if you are uploading the images that images will be directly going into custom vision service there is no storage account required you will be uploading your images into custom vision service but here you have to first upload your images into a blob service and from there you will be consuming those images so how you train these models so for that what are the steps you have to follow you have to upload your images label your images then you have to train that model with the uploaded images and you can make a query to ver verify whether its prediction is correct or not okay that means you will be a uh, first uh, creating uh, a project uploading this images you need to label those images and then you will train it okay so uh, coco file will contains the label informations and you will uh, whenever you train the model it will use that file with the images which is uploaded and uh, try to learn from that information what is there inside the image once the training is completed it will you will be able to make a query so you will be uploading an image to the model and asking whether what is that image or what is there inside the image so it will be able to tell you that this image contains so and so object so a coco file is simple json file that contains the information about the images that uh, as you can see in the right side it's a sample one so images array contains the list of images like uh, image id width height full name of the file absolute url of the image then annotations like okay so you can also specify the uh, object bounded box and other things okay so you will be able to specify this information for each and every image okay so what is the uh, image id and uh, what what is a category and category id then a bounded box everything will be specified inside the json file so this file is called a coco file what is image classification image classification is used to classify the images based on the objects detected in that image for example as i have mentioned whenever you upload the image of a particular dog type it will be able to tell you that yes this is pomeranian because it is clearly telling that it is a pomeranian type or it's a 
Dalmatian type. So it's because there are multiple classes we have defined and this belongs to which class that will be returned. So here you can see when I upload the images of fruits, it will be telling that, OK, this is an image of an apple or this is an image of a banana or it's an image of orange will be returned. Object detection means it is used to detect and locate the specific types of objects within that image. For example, as you see in this, we can identify the objects within the image. So where is the apple or where is the orange or where is the banana? So that places we can detect. So every detection will return the position of that object. So training the custom model using the Vision Studio, if you are creating or if you are trying to perform the uh, custom model, then you have to create a custom model project. OK, so inside the custom model project, we need to select or we need to assign the uh, Azure AI service resource because without the Azure AI service, it cannot train, right? So there is a uh, Azure AI services required for that. And we can specify the uh, data set. Data set means what are the different images and uh, uh, the Coco file. So it will tell you what are the different uh, uh images we have in our storage and what are the attributes it has so you also need to specify what type of training you are going to do it's going to be an image classification or object detection okay means they are uploading this images for image classification purpose or image uh, sorry object detection purpose Create ML project and label the images uh, for creating the Coco files. Means if you don't have the Coco file, you can use the ML Studio and label the images. You can add this Coco file uh, into the storage itself, and then from the storage you can mount that uh, Coco file to the project the studio vision studio project and you can start training this model so right side you can see the sample image once the training is completed it will be able to tell you which image sorry which object uh, is placed in that in, in in a particular position so Whenever you upload an image, it will be able to detect the objects within that and it will tell you that, OK, in this so and so position, we have uh, we have found an orange or in this position we found there is a apple, right? So that will be detected. So if we have to do a lab on this, we can go back to our lab project or lab file. So in this, when you download this GitHub, you will be getting this uh, labs information. So here you can see the image classification and object detection, both will be available. So I'll show you one because of the time constraint, I'll restrict 
to only one so i can go to the image uh, classification so here you can see this is the lab steps that we are going to execute and we'll see how we can do that so the first thing we have to clone this uh, repository okay so this is what the repository we have to clone Red Labs. It's not copying this part. Okay, let me go to Okay, it's cloned. And we can open that folder in VS Code. CD AI Engineer Code dot. And uh, we have to create a custom vision resource. So that for that, we have to go to the Azure portal and then we have to create a resource, right? So we can create a custom vision resource. Let me go here and create a custom vision. So let's search for Okay, so here you can see the custom vision and create. And then what we have to do, we have to specify these parameters, create options both, subscription, resource group, region, and a unique name. So I can follow that, selecting create options both, subscription is this one, and resource group is this one region and a name so name i can say sin custom vision and from here i can select free f0 and prediction tier is also f0 next 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 Okay, let me create this. So it's going to create two resources. One is for prediction and another one is for training. So why there are two resources? Because one model is used or one resource is used for 
training the model that means it will be used to fetch the sample data and apply it to the model and train the model and then publish it second is the prediction endpoint or prediction model what it is doing once we have published the trained model or custom trained model we whenever the customer makes a request it will be executed with the help of prediction endpoint or prediction model so here you can see there are two resources created a custom vision and custom vision prediction once that is done we can create a custom vision project for that we can go to the custom vision.ai website so i can go to custom vision.ai and from here i'll be able to create a new project and this project i can specify the name name i can specify as classify fruit description if you want you can provide a description about that like image classification for fruit resource you can select which is the custom vision service uh, or the uh, multi service account you have that you can select from here so here you can see it's showing the multi service account so if i have to get the other one in not this okay it, it's not listing here and it, it just now created so it may take some time to appear this here or let me refresh yeah now you can see so here uh, let me give once again classify fruit yeah and here i have selected the uh training resource that is uh sin custom vision uh, which is f0 that is free tier which we have created and uh, type you can select classification with the multi class so here classification i'm selecting as the project type and it's a multi class because single tag per image so in one image one tag only we are using like this multiple images will be there or multiple types of images will be there like uh, apples images oranges images bananas images like that different uh, classes will be there in each image there is one tag will be there and we can specify the domain as food here and then we can create the project so you can see it's done once the project is created you can add this images and we can go to the training images slash apples folder and upload all the apples photos so here add images and from the labs It's not uh, this is object detection. This is Apple's photos. So I can upload all these photos. So minimum 15 photos we need, right? 
and we can specify what is a label apple so apple is the label we are providing because these all are apples so a p p l e i can specify and i'm uploading all these 15 images so now we have uploaded the images of apples and the system need to understand that these are all apples and again we are uploading another set of image which can be banana so i can go and upload all these with the class or with the label banana again upload it and also i can upload the orange images so you can see all orange photos are different shapes and size and upload this done so i have uploaded apple orange banana and i have tagged them as you can see in the left side 15 images per tag right once it is done once it is done we can start training the model by clicking on the train okay so when you go here is a train option uh, when you click it will ask for quick training or advanced training so advanced training will take more time so we, we have to go with quick training so quick training itself will take time okay so advanced training will give you more options where you can go and custom because it takes more time so you means it uh, go into very deep analysis of images but so it takes more time so you can send a notification when it complete but here quick training will minimum budget is one hour so let's see when how how quickly it will complete so let's start so you can see it started training and it will take some time to complete this one so once the training is completed then we can test this model by uploading one of the image and it will tell you that this is a banana or this is apple or this is orange so this will take time so we cannot wait for that so we will continue with the next one so what is there in the slide I'm, I'm, uh, and we are not going with the object detection example because of the time limit so uh, let's we will see this later because this will take some time for completing this training process once the training is completed i will come back to this and will do a quick test to verify whether the model is giving the response as expected the last part of this is to analyze videos analyze videos means we can even analyze the video frames to get some insights about that mm -hmm. that means we can get the face recognition feature means if you are uh, playing some video inside this video what are the different uh, uh, human faces we found we can recognize those faces but very limited access because that is again uh, comes under the responsible ai optical character recognition means if there is a text in the uh, scene it will be able to get it speech transcription means if you want to convert the uh, audio into text topics so what are the different uh, informations extracted means the uh, what it is 
talking about that information we can get sentiment the uh, from the audio we will be able to understand whether it is uh, a positive or negative or neutral or a mixed uh, information because some suppose if somebody is talking about his uh, traveling experience so that traveling experience can be good or bad or it may be a mix so from this it will be able to understand what is the sentiment labels so what are the different uh, objects uh, it has identified inside this uh, video frame it will be able to give the labels content moderation is again it again help to moderate the content whether it contains any uh, uh sexual more uh, nude or maybe uh, violence or crime or self harm kind of things then those things will be moderated uh, using this content moderation feature scene segmentation so it will be uh, identifying the different uh, segments within this image itself because a frame can be a combination of different segments so it will be able to detect the different segments within within the uh, video frame so custom insights the predefined models for recognizing language well known celebrities and brands everything but it is also possible to create your own models for uh face recognitions or language understanding purposes or detecting the brands and companies like suppose if i want to uh, uh, identify the brands of different uh, uh, companies by looking into the logos so yes computer vision is able to do uh, that into an excel but if you want to uh, add more uh, brand names and products companies logos everything then you can do that by creating your own model so one customization we have already seen like in custom vision we are able to create our own model right because we take a base model we train the model with our own data and then use that uh, custom model or uh, uh, updated model same you can use for with the face api the face api if you got the permission for uh, uh, re face recognition or uh, face comparison uh, you will be able to perform or you will be able to uh, create a custom model by training uh, the model to by uploading a lot of photos means uh, you can upload the images of uh, celebrities or upload the images of employees into the model and train the model to detect the faces and identify the faces not only detection because detection even can done by uh, the the vision service where that face uh, in the picture but not only detecting the face but also identifying or recognizing the face is important so that is only available on request so language specific customization means typically the models are aware about the general terms and terminologies but whenever you want to use the model into a specific domain like uh, you know that uh, hospital uh, or what to say healthcare industry is the one which is using more complex uh, terminologies the medicines names diseases names or anything like that in that in such cases the pre trained models will not be able to go and understand all the 
ter terms and terminologies that is used in that industry or in that domain. So we can train the model to understand all the terminologies used in that particular model. May not only terminologies, the even jargons also. So uh, like if you are planning to create an application for healthcare. So in the healthcare industry, what are the different uh, uh terminologies we use maybe some of the disease names we cannot understand even it is a very simple uh disease name maybe a fever uh, in medical terms it will be a very difficult name to pronounce right so i don't know the name but yes uh whether it is uh, uh, cancerous or maybe uh, uh, some other disease they will use some very complicated names so uh, normal people can understand only fever, cold, or maybe uh, cancer, that kind of simple names. But internally, they use very complex names for that. So we can create a model by customizing the existing model and teach the model or train the model with this uh, terminologies used in that particular domain. Video indexer widgets and API. See, if we want to uh, implement this uh, video indexers uh, API inside the applications and services, it will be available as widgets. Because whenever we want to play the video, uh, we usually use a normal video player, right? But if you want to moderate the video and then play it inside the applications, we can use a video indexer widget so that whenever we play the video using the video indexer widget, it will be a moderated content and it will be automatically create captions for that or it will be able to uh, uh, show the faces or detect the faces and uh, uh highlight the faces or whatever you configure will be able to do so you will be able to use the video indexer widgets and in, inside your applications so through the apis the rest apis are also we are able to invoke this So I'm not going with the demo of this. So I'll be sharing the link of this uh, labs, remaining labs in chat later so that you can try out this uh, your own. Because of the time constraint, I'm not going to do that because we have to discuss at least two more modules. So in this module so we have completed two modules in this two modules we have discussed about uh, in the first module we have discussed about artificial intelligence and the base concepts and in this module we have discussed about the vision service where uh, what is vision service what is mean by image analysis what are the informations can be extracted from image analysis then we have seen what is face API. So what is the difference between face API and then typical image uh, image analysis face detection feature? Then after that, we have discussed uh, about custom vision, like uh, how we can create a custom model by uploading our own image what are the different types of uh, uh, customization project types are supported like classification and object detection and we started training that model but it will take some time to complete the training let me verify whether it is completed yes you can see it is completed the training see it's finished the training after i think four or five minutes okay so using the food domain so it has completed that once it is completed we'll be able to test it right so 
for testing purpose, what we are supposed to do, we have to go to this URL. This URL we can, it's an Apple image URL. We can use this to test it. So this is totally a different image which we have not used. Okay, so you can see this is a different Apple image. It was not used in the training phase. So now I'm going to do a quick test as you see quick test. And here I can upload the image or I can specify the URL of this image. So I can I'm pasting the URL of this image and do other testing. Yes, you can see the prediction is here. According to this result, it is detecting that it is an apple and its probability is 98%, which means it is sure that it is an apple by 98%. 1.8% it is thinking it may be a, a, a orange because some yellow color is there. So maybe a possibility that it can be orange, but possibility is just below 2%. And it's clearly saying that it's not a banana because it's not in round shape. So, uh, sorry, it is in round shape, but banana is not in round shape, right? So uh, from the shapes it understand, it is not a banana. So it, there is no chance that it can be a banana, but yes, it may be an orange or apple, but the chance of orange is very, very, very low. So it is clearly saying that it is an apple and it is 98% confident about that. All right. So this is how we create custom models. So once this uh, custom models are created, we can now publish. So here is an option for publish because this is a ready to consume model. Now we can publish it. So you can specify the model name, whatever you want and choose a prediction resource because any uh, customer request comes uh, will be consumed or built using this prediction resource. So this prediction resource we have to select. And this is our model name, which is same as this one. Or you can give a different name, maybe. So here you can see I have published this so I can get the prediction URL here. See, this is the prediction URL. Click on this. I can use this URL to predict this. So if I'm uploading a URL of the image for predicting, I can use this. Or if I'm uploading the image stream, then I can use this image stream and while making a request we have to set the authentication headers like a prediction key with the key value content type is json and body is equal to the url of that image right so that is what we have to do so if i have an apple's image Yes, this is an Apple image. And let me try to predict this. Okay, maybe I can take the URL. Okay. So 
ठीक I can take this URL. Go to Postman. Let me try to make a call. So this is the URL and it's a post request in the headers. What are the header values? We have to set the prediction key first. And what's the value for that? And uh, the content type is application JSON and in the body we can specify the JSON body. And here I can specify the image URL. If the URL is accessible, then it should return a result. See here you can see it says Apple by 0 0.70 percentage. That means it's a 70 percentage. It is sure that it is Apple. And uh, orange is a 0 0.29 percentage. And banana is saying 0 0.0023 percentage. That means it is either or apple or orange but 70 percentage of probability is that it is apple right so because i have sent which image the image of uh, so i have sent i think this image so if you want to try with a different image we can try it out also maybe orange image we can try we'll try this one then It's an invalid URL. I think it's not able to access it. Okay. So now it's saying 99 percentage, that is 0 0.99 percentage, it is orange, and just uh, less than 1 percentage, it is apple. Now, if you can try with banana, okay, let me take this image ninety nine percentage that is zero point nine nine is the probability that is banana. So you can see the model is now clearly identifying that the uploaded image is coming in which category, whether it is a banana or apple or orange or some other type. So whatever you want, you can train. So we have trained the model with three categories. Uh, what, are they, what are they? They are uh, apple, orange and banana.
right? So that is what custom vision that we have tried. So we will be able to train the model, test the model uh, within the portal, and we have published this. And this published the mo published model we are able to consume from the Postman or some other client application. So that's the end of uh, the second module. Now we are moving to the next module. This uh, is language module. This is also a lengthy one only, but yes, we'll try to quickly cover the concepts of this. So what is this language? solutions or natural language processing solutions means. So we have a service category called language services, which is typically used for text analysis, text translations, question and answering, and processing natural language text, that is NLP. So here we are going to see those language service features here like analyzing and translating text building a question answering solution and build a conversational language understanding app and custom classification and the named entity extraction and speech recognition synthesis and translation let's first understand analyzing text The AI language service is coming with some pre-configurations for language detection, means it is able to detect the language from the given input, whether it is in Hindi or English or French or some other language. It is also able to do the key phrase extraction. So inside the given text what are the key phrases or key text contents that it is able to extract sentiment analysis that means from the given text it will be able to tell you whether it is a positive uh, review or sorry positive uh, sentiment or negative sentiment so where this positive and negative is used because if you have a application which is a customer facing application in that the customer will consume the services and they can leave the feedback there so like a shopping application like a flipkart if you consider whenever we purchase a product we will verify the review or we will go and check the reviews inside the reviews we will we will see an option like uh, what are the positive reviews and what are the negative reviews so how it will understand which is positive review and which is negative review it's not only based on the uh, what to say uh, rating it but also it uses a sentiment analysis feature so when the user plays a feedback it will pass this feedback text into a natural language processing uh, ai service which analyze the sentiment of the text and understand that this is a positive review or a negative review for example if you purchase a product and you see that the uh, review is given as uh, an awesome product worth for money you can go for it yes it's a positive feedback but if something like a, uh, it's a waste of money don't go for it 
it's a negative feedback right so that is uh, application that is how applications uses the ai service for uh, uh, feedback analysis means to get uh, information about the feedback whether it is positive or negative because it will be, it will be very difficult for a person to sit and read all the reviews right because sometimes there will be millions of reviews coming in at a time so it will be difficult for a human to sit and uh, classify it named entity recognition so named entity means within this uh, text what are the different uh, 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 objects or text or locations or duration something is mentioned for example inside the uh, text if we have mentioned about a particular hotel name so that hotel name is an entity or if you are referring a person like a celebrity or something so that is an entity or if you are referring a time like a tomorrow or day after tomorrow so that is an entity right so an entity is uh, containing the information or entity is about a person about a location about a time or about some other objects right so it will be able to go and extract the entities from the given text entity linking is also possible which means if it is a known entity it will be linked to automatically to the wikipedia for example if you say okay uh, sachin tendulkar so Sachin Tendulkar is a person's name. So it extracts this name and then automatically gives the wiki link to the Sachin's uh, page. Summarization is another feature. So if you give a very, very lengthy text and you want to summarize that in just a few sentences, uh, then you can use the summarization feature of the language services. PII detection, that is personal identification information, like the emails, mobile number, PIN number, or password, or similar information. So if your text contains uh, some personal information, it will be able to detect that personal information so that in case if you want to mask the text you can do that or you want to uh, uh, ignore this text you can do that ignore in the sense you can avoid that text in the, from from your uh, uh, input text and instead of that actual text uh, text you can put some dummy value for example uh, send the details to uh, the specified email id example and instead of giving the actual email id you can say xyz dot abc dot com or uh, xyz dot example dot com so some dummy values we can put that okay that is the benefit of a personal identification information detection language detection let's understand what is language detection it will determine the language that is used in the given text for example if you uh, provide a french text content as an input it will be able to tell you that the input text is uh, in french so you can easily go and translate this into a different uh, language okay or if you are providing your input in uh, german or hindi 
it will be able to understand that this is a language which is uh, not used to default so you can uh, translate or you can translate that text later if you want so it will help you to detect the language uh, of the given input as you see the uh, text contents you will be passing as an array of text or array uh, into this uh, API. So whenever you make a call to the language detection feature of uh, the service, it will, you will be uh, passing a set of documents uh, as an array and it will be returning what are the different uh, uh, what to say, uh, languages used in the given text. Key phrase extraction. It will identify the main talking points of this text. It works best with the larger documents up to 5100 and 20 characters. So if your uh, uh, text content is talking about some uh, specific entities or some known entities, it may be a person name, it may be a building name, or it may be some other type of entity. So it will tell you that uh, this is uh, the entity though, or it is the uh, key phrase inside that particular text. So that means because you are going to talk about some in, uh, informations that uh, you have uh, walked this many kilometers, or you have uh, uh, mentioned about some measurement. So all these will come under the key phrases and you can see the result is returned as uh, an array it, from each document it returns the list of list of uh, key phrases right so uh, suppose if you have given multiple inputs or multiple documents as a uh, input then it returns the uh, multiple responses multiple response means in the response itself multiple documents will be attached and that is going to give you uh, understanding about the uh, key phrases used inside the uh, given context content sentiment analysis we can score overall document sentiment and individual sentiment uh, using the sentiment analysis so that means if you want you can give a single text and identify the sentiment like uh, I liked this uh, session very much. So that is a single document that we can send. Document in a sense, every information goes to the API as a JSON document, right? So that's why I mentioned document. But if you want, you can also identify the sentiment of a uh, group of documents by uh, splitting that. Like uh, if you make a call to the sentiment analysis API. You can either send a single document or you can send a, a collection of text that is called a, a group of uh, text uh, given as an input. So while returning, it will be able to send the sentiment of uh, the whole documents and or the uh, individual document. So if you see the uh, results can be a positive, negative, mixed or neutral. So positive means if 
it contains some positive uh, informations like I like I uh, got it or something like that, like positive feedback then it is going to return positive. If it is containing some kind of negative information or if you feel that uh, it is a negative review, it returns negative. But sometimes people will give a feedback with a, a mixed also because uh, okay, I like that this so and so features, but there was some problems with the other areas. Okay, so in that case, we can say the uh, comment is considered as a mixed review. Scores uh, can also be a uh, neutral. Neutral means it's not positive, it's not negative, and uh, uh, not containing a hybrid. A hybrid in the sense not mixed. So it will be a normal. Okay. I went to school. It means it is a, just a normal statement. It is not happy. It is not sad. It's a neutral statement, right? Or hello, how are you? It's a, it's a neutral statement. Named entity recognition. Named entity, as we have mentioned, like a key phrases, if there are some specific person's name or location name, date and time or organization's name, address, something is mentioned, we can consider it as a entity, right? So these uh, elements, if mentioned in the document, it can be uh, considered as a named entity. So using this language service, you will be able to extract the list of uh, named entities as you see here. Okay, so if you Let me reopen this. Okay, let me. So here we can see this is a text which is given as an input, but here you will see it contains some person name, location, and the date and time, right? So if you see this Joe is the person name. Here London is the location name. And this Saturday is going to be the, uh, what to say, a, a date and time. So you can see in the response which is received, it tells what are the different entities identified. There is a person type and the value is Joe. There is a location type that is London. 
and there is a date and time that is of Saturday. Entity linking. So entity linking is used to disambiguate entities of the same name. For example, if you say a word Venus, a Venus can be uh, the name of a planet or it can be a name of the goddess from Greek or from Roman, right? So if you see, uh, when you when you see a text or when you provide a text that contains the uh, uh, word Venus, it, the uh, system will be confused that it will be a uh, gold Venus or it's representing the planet, right? So you can extract the entities and link this with the uh, wikis. So you can see when it when we provide this text that is i saw venus shining in the sky so that means th there is a word venus right but venus can be a, the name of the planet or can be the name of a goddess so which one is which one we are referring to so that when the response comes you can see it is returning the matches. First one is the Venus planet, and also it is returning the Venus, which is the goddess name, right? So that means it returns the information about the uh, that particular uh, entity. Right, so from the wiki, so in the wiki, what is the uh, text it is identified, it returns. So here, if you see the uh, Venus is representing as a planet, right? So because I saw Venus shining in the sky is representing the planet Venus, not the uh, goddess Venus. So the model is able to understand that you are uh give you have given this one because of some some kind of uh, confusion so it returns if you want to if you want to understand more about that you can go to this link and uh, refer this so that's why the wiki link is also given here Summarization. Summarization is another feature of uh, language service which can provide two different types of summarization. That is extractive summarization, which produces summary by using the most important sentences, and uh, abstractive summary summarization, which produces a summary capturing the main idea but not necessary necessarily using the same words as the source document so it will create a summary for you uh, in two ways the summary can be created uh, by using the exact sentences of that particular uh, statement that means it will produce summary by using the most important sentences that refers to that uh, one at abstractive summarization means it will not going to give a exact same uh, word, but it will be creating its own summarization content. So here, how do you make a request? You can make a request by providing the text. So that text will be a very lengthy text. Okay, so here you can see an example. A long paragraph about the Microsoft technology. So you'll be providing this as the input text, and you can specify what are the things to do. You are expect, expecting the extractive summarization. So from that, I want to extract the summary. Okay, and uh, 
here you will get the result. So the sentences, the text, the first sentence, best summarizing document. Okay, so that will be done. So you can see uh, this is getting more rank. So this is the summary which we are getting that is having more rank. And this is another summary which we are getting, which is the second highest. As you can see, 0 0.67 is the rank score. Okay. So if you look into the rank score, which one has the highest one? The first one. So that's why this is uh, considered. The final one, the personally identifiable information. It is used to detect and remove sensitive information because whenever we send some information or text content uh, over the application or mail or somewhere, uh, we have to mask the sensitive information or we have to hide this sensitive information. So in that case, what we can do is we can use the personally identifiable information detection, PII detection feature, which is able to uh, detect and remove sensitive information like a person's phone number, email address, credit card, or the, some financial account information, password, everything. So what, for example, if you see, you are going to give this text as an input. If there is a sensitive information like a email, a phone number, etc. So it can be masked. As you can see, it is removed and it is masked. So instead of showing that, it is just masked. And it is also telling what are the entities it is detected and masked. As you can see, and it is detected. The first one is a phone number. Second one is a email. So this is the phone number value and this is the email value. So you can see these are the two places where it is applying this mask. So that is what the analyzing text feature in the language services. We will do a uh, demo on that. We'll do a lab on this, but we'll take a small break first. After the break, we will continue with this. Okay, so we can take a 15 minutes break. And after this break, we will continue this session. So you can also go and have a cup of tea if you want. So we'll continue with the remaining modules and topics after this 15 minutes break.
uh hello guys uh, those who are still remaining with the batches uh, guys get a activated batch and put done on chat box so i can see
Hello. I hope all are back. We'll continue the session. OK, so let's move to the next one. So here we have the uh, lab or exercise. So you can check the lab document uh, which is provided here, whether it has a lab on this, because there are two modules or two different uh, lab environments we have. So here you can see there is one lab on uh, analyzing the text. So here this is the text analysis uh, example. So let me take this lab. So as you can see, this is for text analytics. In this text analytics, we will be understanding how we can use the language service for the text analysis purpose. So let's try this demo. So for this, we have to uh, we we have to go and create an Azure resource. So we already have an Azure resource uh, created. We'll we can reuse that, or if you want, we can separately create.
हेलो सर हेलो यस सर यू आर ऑन म्यूट सॉरी ओके ओके सो व्हाट आई हैव डन इज बिकॉज आई हैव रिकनेक्टेड इट्स गॉन ऑन म्यूट ओके सो व्हाट आई had done uh, is creating a language service so the language service when you create you will get some default features uh, along with that if you can if you want you can add some custom features or extra features like uh, custom question answering and custom uh, entity detection or custom text classification kind of thing so if you need this features you can explicitly select those uh, features and while creating you need to specify the ai search if you are going with the custom uh, question and answering but if you are going with the default features it's not required so once again i'll show you that option so inside this ai services if you go with the language service as you can see these are the default features available and these are the extra two parameters you will get so you can select these two if you select these two you need to provide some extra information because the custom question answering requires a search service and uh, custom text classification entity recognition and summarizations requires a storage account so you need to create a storage account if you want to use this and if you want to use this feature you need to use a, a search service so what i have done is along with this default features i have also selected these two then while creating as you can see we need to provide the resource group region name of the service pricing tier and also the additional parameters because of the custom question answering we have to specify the search service and because of the custom text classification we need to specify the uh, what to say uh, storage account so these all things i have specified and created a re new resource as you can see the resource is still in deployment it's now creating the uh, language service because it has already created the other services i think this is the search services creating now so we need to wait until this is created we could create this without the search also means without selecting those additional features so once that is done we could uh go to the next step the next step is to clone the repository so if you are doing with the uh, uh, portal inside the portal we can open the cloud shell and then we can clone the resource but uh, i don't want to do that i'll do it in the local machine so i'll go to my local machine and clone this code here so i'll just uh, inside this labs i'm going to clone this so you can see it's just a uh, cloned that i'll go to the language and here lab files here we have the uh, language service options we can see though these are the different the labs we have 
for analyzing the text q and a language language application creation and so on so what we are going to do here we'll go to the analyze text option so we can go to the first folder so let me go inside it cd01 analyze text and we'll open uh, the thing in the visual studio code so if i open this you can see it contains sample code in c sharp as well as python so it's your wish whether you are uh, uh, a C sharp developer, you can use the C sharp code, or if you are a Python developer, you can go with the Python code. So, so I'm going to use the Python code because that is more easy and uh, understandable to most of the AI developers. So, the first thing after cloning this repository is to uh, install the package. Because if I want to use the text analysis features, I have to install this pip package. As you see, this is the pip package. But if you are a .NET developer, you can install the .NET NuGet package. That is azure.ai.textanalytics. But since I am doing the Python demo, so I can install this pip package installation. So I'll go here install this as you can see it installed the version 5.3.0 of this text analysis and we can go to the environment variable or environment file and update the environment variables in the env file so what are the things we have to put there the endpoint and the key so let's go to this and here you can see the uh, environment variables for service endpoint and the key so the service endpoint and the key we can get from the text analytics service so it, i think the service is not yet ready it's still creating the search service but no problem we can go back to resource group here we can see the language service. So this is the language service which is available because since we are using the language service only and the language service is already active, we can see it's created. So we can go to the keys and endpoint section. Okay, and we can go copy the key and put it here in the key section. And we can take the endpoint and put it inside the endpoint section. So that's done. We have updated the endpoint and the key in the environment variables file. Now we can come to the code and see what are the updations to be done there. Now coming to the text analysis.py, if you are a C sharp developer, you can update this import statements but in python we have to do this import so i'm just copying this code and putting it the import section yes i have imported the azure credentials and the text analytics client once that is done inside this main function we need to create an instance of the ai client so we can just copy this code for python so for C sharp developers, the above code can be used. So inside of this, we have to create a text analytics client. So here, if you see, we have imported the namespaces and inside the main function, we are loading this environment variables from the env file and then creating the key credential file sorry key credential variable and then using that credentials we create a text analytics client we are passing the endpoint here and the credentials object here so this returns an ai client now i want uh, to uh, analyze the reviews from the reviews folder 
so there is a reviews folder you can see inside the text analytics folder so there is a review one review two review three review four and review five so a review one is giving the text like a good hotel and stuff and then uh, some extra information like uh, clean rooms good service and things so it's it's a, i think it's a uh, positive feedback review two is again this but this is old hotel and the room furnishing is not good something like that so it's i think it's a negative uh, feedback and you can see there are a couple of more and this is in a different uh, language itself the review is in a different language so there are five reviews in the reviews folder all are in the text files so what it is going to do it uh, uh, iterate the reviews folder and read one by one review file and opens that review file you can see using the open method we opens that review file here and read the content here so we got the review content here now the first step what i'm going to do i'm going to detect the language of that so for that uh, here i can take this So this is going to detect the language how the AI client that is text analytics client dot detect language functionality we are calling and we are passing the text here and it will return the result from the response we are getting the second element sorry first instance so it will be the uh, language value which is returned and we are printing that detected language is dot primary language dot name. Okay, so detected language dot primary language dot name. So and see if I want to run, I can go and run it here. I'm going inside the Python folder and say Python text analysis or oh, that is yes you can see it is it is printing the file name and the file content and the language you can see the language is coming as english second review this is the content it is english third one is again english fourth one is english and the fifth one is in french as you can see the fifth one is in a different language so it's detecting the language uh, of that particular review that it is french so the language detection feature is working successfully and it is able to detect the language for the given text now let's go back and see how we can analyze the sentiment so for sentiment analysis again i'm copying this code and putting it here so sentiment analysis will tell you whether it is a positive feedback or negative feedback as you can see sentiment analysis equal to ai dot analysis sent analyze sentiment of documents equal to the given text and then we will get the first response and from this response what is a sentiment value we are going to print this so now let's run and see what is a sentiment here so if you see the first one it's a positive one because you can see it's a clean good service and so on so it's a good one second one is a negative review as you can see it's average and looks very old as so and so it's a negative one and the third one is a mixed one so there is something positive something is bad and fourth one is again a mixed one and the fifth one 
is a positive one. Now coming to the identifying the key phrases. What we can do? We use the extract three key phrases function that will return the list of key phrases extracted and using a loop we have to print those key phrases. See, extract key phrases returns the list of key phrases and we will check is there any key phrase exist or not means the number of key phrases is greater than zero then only we will be printing the key phrases like uh, from the phrases array one by one key phrase we are taking and printing that let's try this yes as you can see this is the first review from from the first review it's identified the key phrases like a royal hotel so this is here this one then good hotel good service great location buckingham palace west minister minister abbey same group west coast so these are some key phrases extracted from this review like this for from every content we have extracted right now we can extract the entities also so what are the different entities we can extract so we can copy this code so for that we are going to call extracting the entities function that is recognize entities the recognize entities will return the list of entities in that given text okay so here from the first result what are the entities detected that entities will come here if there are more than zero entities then we print it yeah this is the one so you can see these are the entities detected staff staff is a person type a royal hotel is a location london is a location and london is used in another place also so it's again uk is a location this is a date and time rooms is representing a location buckingham palace is location type stay is an event or fish is a product Right, so you can see these are uh, some of the uh, entities which is uh, identified and here in the second one you can see these are the different uh, uh, what to say uh, entities identified and finally we can go to linked entities so if there is any linked entities, we can get that information uh, about that along with the URL of that linked entity, like a wiki URL of that. So we can go to that. And here we are calling recognize linked entity. It means if there is some uh, ambiguous uh, words or ambiguous entities there, then we will extract those and will print along with the url of that so if for a reference you can verify that right so let's go and run this see here good music so it's a wiki uh, url is given hotel is given so that is given here the royal hotel is here given here london is given here as a linked entity 
So you can see these are some of the linked entities which is identified that has the corresponding URL printed. For reference, if you can, if you want, you can go and click this and it will take you to the wiki link, right? So this is Royal Hotel Film. Buckingham Palace and see this. So that means it is able to extract the linked entities, the entities and their types, the key phrases, the sentiment and the language. So these are the things that we have identified using the text analysis service so that's the end of the text analysis uh, lab and here is translating text which is another feature of uh, language service so multilingual language translation or multilingual text translation is uh, supported uh, you can use the REST API to convert the languages from one to another language. So it will detect the language and also one to many translation we can do or sc script transliteration also can be done. So one to many translation means from one language you can convert this into or means translate into convert is not the right word you can translate this into uh, different other languages in one go for example if in this case the language is detected as ja that is japanese and here it can be translated into english as well as french in one go okay that is one to many translation possible Transliteration means some of the languages may have multiple scripts supported. Like if you, for example, if you go to uh, Chinese, simplified Chinese also there, then uh, newer Chinese also there. So that means there are multiple scripts supported. So if the language support multiple script, from one script, it can be converted into another script also. Okay, for example, if if our language uh, Hindi or uh, Sanskrit or will have a script, I think uh, Devanagari or something like that, so, like this, I don't know the exact name, but yes, if there is a script is there, we can convert one from one script type to another type within the language. Okay, so that is called a script transliteration. So here, for language detection, we simply use this REST API. So it can make a request to the detect endpoint and passing the text. And it is going to tell you the detected language is this one, that is Japanese. Translation means you can specify the trans or you can call the translate API where you need to specify the text and it is going to return the target uh, outputs. That is here you are specifying from Japanese, you want to translate to, there are two, two parameters mentioned, to English and to French, which means from Japanese, we can convert this into uh, French or English, right? Translate. Uh, translation means you will be converting from one script to another script like a uh, language is Japanese from script is Japan uh, and script is Latin something so you can see this is the text and this is the source language code so within this uh, language from the source script to this target script you are converting so that means from one script to another script it should be compatible so if it is convertible script then it can be converted from one script to another script then translation options word alignment is possible because it will tell you 
inside the text while translating when translating you can include an extra parameter called include alignment because when we convert from one language to another language it will be difficult for us to understand the from the source language which of the words are forming the uh, second languages words for example if you see uh, chinese for a very lengthy text maybe a combination of multiple text for example artificial intelligence so in english we are writing it in two words artificial intelligence two words but when it goes to chinese it may be a single word so within one paragraph it will be difficult for us to understand okay artificial intelligence is given in english in chinese where is this artificial intelligence comes from where to where or uh, uh, in inside of the chinese there is a single word given for that that is representing uh, the words of uh, source language but from which letter to which letter so that you can map using this one okay so here the characters 0 to 4 in the source are the characters of 0 to 1 in the translation so you can see 0 to 4 in the uh, uh, source language is converted into 0 to 1 in the target language for example here smart smart means five char five characters are there so this five characters when we translated this into uh, Chinese, we can see this only two words, right? So that means the 0 to 4, 0 to 4 means five characters of the source language is mapped to the 0 to 1, that is only two characters in the targeted language, okay? And here characters 6 to 13 in the source language are the characters uh, uh, in uh, 2 to 3 in the translation. So here 6 that is services. So these are the 6 to 13. So this 6 to 13 that is services is simply written in this 2 to 3 that is this 2. So because when we translate from one language to a completely different language it will be difficult for us to understand uh, from the source language which of the words or characters are translated into the uh, uh, targeted language which of the characters the positions so if you if you understand or if you uh, use this include alignment it will give you a response like uh, from the source which of the characters is translated into uh, the target language character positions so here 0 to 4 in the source is translated to the first two characters of Chinese and 6 to 13 is translated to the next two characters 2 and 3 position means 0, 1, 2, 3. Sentence length. Translation time. It is uh, also possible to specify uh, an extra parameter include a sentence length which will tell you the uh, source language length and the translated language length that is sometimes while translating the translated language will have more characters inside of this so that length will can be specified uh, specified in the sense length can be returned uh, from uh, while while translating from source to uh, uh, tran uh, translated language using this parameter include a sentence length so here in the source is 12 characters that is here this is 12 characters in the translation you can see this is 20 characters that means hello world which is a 12 character english sentence when we translate this into uh, uh, some other language what is that uh, french it will be uh, 20 characters profanity filtering is also po uh, possible which means if there is uh, uh, some uh, text which we cannot expose or which is having some uh, problem in showing we can use the profanity action so what 
is the profanity action to be taken. So that will be mentioned here. So here marked means it will be trans uh, while translating. It will not be translated. Instead of that, it will show some uh, asterisk instead of that actual word. So you can see the JSON text is some word they have used here and then great. And when translating that word is not shown here, it's instead of that it uses the uh, star. So it because when when we translate the dialogues, movie dialogues, so in the source language it is written by the script writer, so which we cannot change. But while translating, we can give a uh, mute there or we can give a uh, what uh, mask there so that this will not be converted into that uh, language. Custom translation is there. So uh, for using the custom translation, you can use the custom translation portal and we can uh, link a workspace to the Azure translator service or means translator resource, create a project and uploading the data files, train this because if we, uh, if the model is the existing model, that is a pre-trained model is not accurately translating this content, then we can configure it by providing the uh, custom training because we will be uploading the documents for uh, source and uh, target languages and we will train the model so that the model will understand how it is translated from one language to another language because some of the languages will not have translation feature such cases we can use this uh, what to say custom translation and this is primarily uh, required whenever we convert from uh, uh, English to some other uh, local languages there will not be any equivalent words or from a local language means from native language to English when we convert there may not be some equivalent words but uh, that is not understood by the the uh, what to say uh, model such cases we have to train the model that for these these particular words or sentences this is what is the translation because some uh, jargons that we use or some uh, uh, text or words that we use in our uh, uh, native that that will not, that cannot be converted into english because there is no direct equivalent for that Right, so that such cases we can use custom translation. So we can try the translate text option here. So we can detect and translate the text using the Python code. Let's see the demo. Okay, so here we have this uh, translation service. So for this, we can go and create an Azure AI translator resource. We can go and create this. multi service web yeah here is the translator So we have selected the translator service. We can go and 
select the resource group region name and we can also specify the pricing tier so i can go with the s1 So let's wait for the translation service or translator service to create. OK, you can see it's created. Now what we have to do is. Open this code. For. I think it is the sixth lab. CD06. Okay. So let me open the VS code. As you can see, uh, like like other demos, we also have Python and C sharp code. So since we are doing with Python, we can use this. Like the other services, we have to specify the service key and uh, location here. So endpoint is not required; only location is enough. Okay. So what we have to do now is. After provisioning this, we have to go and update the key and location. So go to the service, get the key from here, and we can update this. Yeah. And the region is, I think, East US. This, this is the region so we have copied the region as well as uh, the service key now we can update the text translations.py file in this what are the changes that we have to make we have to install this packages that is already there. Okay. So let's go through this code. In this, first we are declaring some global variables like a translator endpoint, cognitive key and cognitive region. We are loading the environment variables by calling the load dot env this will be loading this environment variables into uh, python environment and then it is getting into the variables python variables so we got we'll get the key region and the endpoint into this variables and we have our reviews in our reviews folder so these are the different uh, uh, reviews we have and we are going to iterate through the reviews folder and open each one of this review as you can see and the first thing we will be doing is calling the get language function so it is going to print the language what is that so get language function is defined below but that is not implemented as you can see the default language is set as English. OK, but our requirement is the get language function is going to evaluate this text and returns what is the language in that particular text. So how we can implement that we will go here. 
so we have to use the azure ai translator detect function okay so inside this get language function we have to use this code See here, the default language is set as English because in case if it is unable to detect the uh, language or if, if there is some issue, it uh, returns default language as English. And for detecting the language, the URL path is slash detect. If you uh, remember inside the PPT, we have seen for detecting this language, for detecting this language, after the base url it is coming slash detect right so that is what we are going to use for detecting the language we have to use the path as uh, slash detect and we are combining the base endpoint with the path and as an extra parameter we are adding api version equal to 3.0 and we, these are the request headers like a OCP APM subscription key is this one and OCP APM subscription region is this region. And inside the body, we are passing the uh, review content or review text and we'll make a post request, request dot post passing this URL, parameters, headers and JSON body. Once the response is received here request dot json means it returns the response then we can get the language from that so detecting the language we have already done using the language service but this is the translator service we are using to detect the language so response of zero uh, of language means it returns the detected language so now you will be confused why we have to do this because this can be easily done by the language service also. Yes, the language service also able to do the same process, but uh, the, the translator service is detecting the language through a REST API and it is important to understand that language, then use this language to translate to the other languages. Suppose now we have identified that each review is in which language. So if you want, we can try running this code. CD. So you can see it is reading this and uh, telling the language code. See, instead of printing the complete language name, it is just giving the language code EN, 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 and here is the FR. So that means this is a French. So only the last review is in French, right? So that's what it's given. Now, what? we have to do next so we have also tested this it's successfully able to detect the language no problem now we have to translate this for translating this we have to go to the next function because here the get language function is used to detect the language now we, to translate this we have to use the translate function so here if the language is not equal to english then only we have to translate because ultimately our result has to come in english that is what i want so the translation operation i have to call if the language is not equal to english so that means only for the i think last review which is in french will be translated into uh, the given language so here we have to translate the given text into the language okay sorry uh, from this language so 
So this is the detected language. So if the detected language is this, and it will be translated into the uh, targeted language. For that, we, we have to call the translate function, which is defined below. Okay, so it's not implemented. We have to implement it. So let's go and copy this. Just a minute. Okay, sorry, let's continue. So let me copy this code. And you can see this code is used to translate the text. So you can see this time the URL path is translate because if you want to translate, then you have to call the translate uh, API. So that's why the path is given as translate. And the complete URL will be the base URL plus the path. And the request parameters are API version. As you can see here, we have to specify the API version from language and the one or more two languages. Right. So we can say from the source language, what is received here, and the two is given one or more language we can specify. That's why here it is given as an array. OK, so here it is uh, English only we want. So that's why it is given as uh, EN. Headers, again, it, we are passing the key and region. In the body, we are passing the text. And we have to make a request. While making the request, it uh, returns the response here. So here, here we will get the response text and from the translations result, the translated text we will get into this variable and we will return the translated text. And that translated text will be printed here after this. Okay, so let's try this. I'm just going to rerun this program. So since all the other reviews are in same uh, sorry in english language there is no translation required only for the fifth review you can see french will be translated into this a pleasant hotel and this i love this hotel the staff is very friendly and the rooms are comfortable so this is a positive review right so this is what the translation of this french so that is what the translation api in Azure AI services. OK, so let's move to the next. OK, since we have with less time let's move to this so next we will talk about the question answering solution the question answering solution is uh, most commonly used with uh, chatbots or some kind of customer engagement applications. So consider that you have a uh, uh, 
product manual and this product manual contains uh, instructions how to operate that product or how to operate that uh, device and if the customer wants to uh, use that product he has to read all the instructions from that document it will be difficult for him to read all the documents and find out the solution for that because he may be familiar with some of the features of that product only in some functionality for example very simple example i can say i have a remote maybe a tv remote or a ac remote or something in that remote we know the basic functionalities of the remote right if it is a tv remote there is a on button off button and uh, channel uh, uh, changing buttons volume up and down buttons right but there are some extra buttons which is given which is in maybe in red color green color blue color yellow color which we are not aware what is the functionality or what is the use of that button okay so what we do we go to the product manual and then read what is the use of that uh, red button or how to operate with that button right so what we are uh, doing is reading this manual from top to bottom or we'll go to a specific page and then reading that still we have to go and read the complete content right and finding out the answers from such documents is very very difficult or maybe a faq website so you may have a faq website uh, where which contain maybe hundreds of questions like maybe you go to the uh, banking website and in banking websites faq page and you want to know how to re reset the password of uh, an account or what is transaction password so you have to go from question 1 to question 100 to understand where it, they are talking about the transaction password or how to uh, add a beneficiary what are the steps so in such scenario it will be difficult to refer a document manually such scenarios we can make use of a q and a solution which refer this document and give the answers to the customer queries so i don't need to go and read the document i will ask the q and a service okay can you tell me how to set the uh, transaction password or how to um, what to say uh, add a beneficiary so when i ask this question to the q and a service question and answering service it is the responsibility of the q and a service to go to the document and understand uh, where it is placed and extract the correct information and returns it okay so that is the uh, q a service so we are going to see about that there is a knowledge base for every q a service the knowledge base of question and answer pairs with the natural language understanding means every uh, uh, Q&A service creates a knowledge base. So what is knowledge base? Simply knowledge base, I can uh, say it's a dictionary or maybe a database which is store the list of questions and answers. For example, if I am giving a, a FAQ website URL, it is the responsibility of the Q&A service to read that FAQ questions and answers and put inside the knowledge base so that whenever the customer asks a question, it goes to that database. It's not actually a database, it's called knowledge base. So it goes to the knowledge base and search for the matching question. So which question is matching to the customer query and provide the answer for that. Right. Or if it is a product manual, it goes to the product manual, extract all the questions and answers from that, or it will auto generate the questions corresponding to the given headings. For example, uh, setting up uh, power button or configuring power button. So this is the heading. So it will automatically create a question like how to set up 
the power button. So that questions will be automatically configured by the knowledge base. So it will extract the information from the documents and generating a set of questions and answers with the help of natural language processing. And once this knowledge base is ready, we will publish this as a service because it's a it's not a predefined model. Model means it's not a predefined model with the set of questions and answers. There is a model, but it does not uh, have any questions and answers inside it. So what we do, we train the model to understand the questions and answers. OK, or maybe some alternate questions. OK, so we train the model to provide the uh, answers for the questions. Once the training is completed, we publish it. Once it is published, then customers can consume this service using REST APIs. So what we are supposed to do is we need to uh, train the Q&A service or train the model to generate the questions and answers as well as understand the answers and questions so that it can provide the uh, responses or, or answers for the queries uh, the user ask. So there is a uh, confusion uh, for some people, those who come from the AI background. What is the difference between Q&A service, that is question and answering service, and a language understanding service like a NLU, Natural Language Understanding Service. The difference is Q&A service, what we do is we provide a question and we are expecting an answer to come. It's just a uh, like a dictionary where you will provide a question and it is the responsibility of that service to provide an answer for that. OK, it does not do any action. It does not do anything else. It go to the database and search. Is there any answer for this question? Or is there any question which is similar to this so that I can provide that answer? If the answer is not found, it will say that no, not found. But in language understanding, user provide a text. It may be a question. It may be a request or it may be in some instruction, anything. So user is providing an utterance. Utterance means it is a text. For example, uh, uh, I want to uh, switch on the TV. Means it's a it's not a question. It's a, just an instruction or it's just a statement. So any instruction or any statement the user is providing to the language understanding service is called a utterance. And the user is expecting a response or action for it very simply. You are using Amazon Alexa or maybe some voice assistant tools or some uh, uh, devices which is, which is supported by uh, voice com commands. So you will tell the device switch on the TV or switch on the light. Then immediately the device is detecting that voice and executing the action. It's not giving an answer for you, right? Instead of giving the answer, what that service is doing or what is that device is doing, it understand your utterance, means your instruction, and execute an action for that, right? Switch on the AC, which means it understand that, okay, I have to switch on the device. So which device? AC device. So let me switch on that. So it will do, the uh, uh, action. So that means it's a in uh, the, the language understanding service uh, role is to understand what the user is giving. If the user is telling to uh, execute some action, then it will give this instruction to some backend system, and it is the responsibility of the backend system to operate that action because. The language service cannot go and switch on the TV. For switching on the TV or AC, it will give an instruction to the corresponding service. Maybe it will call a function or a program or a 
uh, script to switch on the TV or AZ, right? So that is what it does. Service, uh, the question and answering service uses natural language understanding to match the question to the answer in the knowledge base. So what, how it is operating? Whenever the user provides a question, it will take that question and go to the database that is knowledge base and identify is there any question which is matching to this or similar to this so that I can provide that answer. Response is a static answer to the non question it means if the question is existing, it always provide a static answer like how to switch on the TV. The answer will be always same. Right, so there is no programming involved inside it because it's a responsibility is just to take the question, go to the database, provide that search for the answer. If the answer exists, provide that answer. That's it. Okay. The client application present that answer to the user. So in the chatbots, we can use this. Like, uh, for example, in IRCTC website, there is a chat assistant called the Disha. Right. So you can go and ask how to pick, book a ticket. So it will always give a static answer. So how this uh, assistant is doing that? Like if you go to, I don't know whether this site is up and running. Yes, here you can see this is the virtual assistant. So here you can ask how to book a ticket. So you can see this is the answer. This is uh, answer which is provided at the time of booking. Select only the only if all the birds provided in the same coach. So this is a answer which is given. So how many times you ask the same question, it always give you the same answer, right? So or how to cancel the ticket. So you can see this is the given answer, right? So whether it is correct or wrong, I'm not sure. But whenever you give a query, it goes to the knowledge base and search for the matching answers like a cancel the ticket. So it may be extracting the key phrases from this and it will understand, OK, there is a entity called a ticket an action called the cancel so cancel ticket cancel ticket so wherever the cancel ticket is coming it will go and find out the answer for that and which is the primary answer or first answer which is coming it will be returned but it may be correct or not correct it depends on the accuracy of the model which is used okay so this is what the knowledge uh, uh, sorry the question and answering but the language understanding service is also used in chatbots only or chatbots or some other devices which is capable to understand what the user is saying and perform some actions against that. For example, if there is a cleaning robot which is used for cleaning the rooms, you can tell the device go and clean the room. So the device will go to that room and do the action. It does not give you any answer, right? So it's a uh, intent is to understand what the user is saying. It's user is asking for cleaning or user is saying, giving an instruction to clean. So it will go and do that activity. Okay. Or you can ask the Alexa kind of devices. What is the time? So it will tell the current time. So after 10 minutes, if you ask, the answer will be different. Right, so that means it does not give you a static answer. It will always dynamic because it understand what the user is doing or user is asking and then generate an answer accordingly and provide. It may be an answer is provided that is appropriate response is provided or it executes some action. Suppose if you are telling the Alexa, okay, so Alexa, can you uh, play a music? then it will start playing the music instead of giving an uh, response, right? But sometimes it will give a response. So you can ask the Alexa, what is 
the time now. So it will give you the current time value. So that's why either it will do an action by giving instruction to appropriate uh, backend programs, or it will give you a response after connecting to the backend program because it will give this instruction, uh, give this uh, query to the backend application, and backend application will uh, calculate what is the current time. And that current time will be uh, send it to the Alexa, and Alexa will be telling you that this is what the current time because Alexa is just acting as an agent, right? So, which will help you to connect to the back end cloud services or uh, some AI services, right? So, that is the difference between question answering and language understanding. So to do this, we have to go to the Language Studio portal. And in the Language Studio, you will be able to create a knowledge base and you can upload some documents. I said the questions and answers can be created from uh, documents or uh, FAQ websites, or you can add some predefined chit chat pairs. OK, so just a minute, I'll be back. OK, so uh, that is what the knowledge base. And sometimes in the knowledge base, we can have multi turn conversations. So multi turn conversation means sometimes when we ask a question, it is not possible for the knowledge base or the uh, question and answering agent to give a concrete answer or final answer in one go. It may need to ask a second question for that. For example, so if you ask, uh, as you see in the screen, how I can cancel a reservation. So reservation means it can be a train ticket reservation, hotel reservation, or a flight reservation, anything. So which reservation you are asking for? So uh, the calculation policies are different for different type of reservation. So which reservation you are looking for? Then it will give you choice like hotel or cancel. Then you give, click on the uh, hotel or flight. Accordingly, it will give you the answer. So the final answer is coming after asking a second question. So you ask a question to uh, the agent, means the uh, question and answering solution. It will uh, understand your question, but uh, instead of giving a final answer, it will need some more clarity. So that it will ask you, are you looking for this or the other? So if you say, OK, I am looking for the second one, then it will give you the answer for that. So that means it's a multi turn. Multi turn means it's it's not a single request response process. You make a single request. It goes to the uh, question and answering service. It will need more clarity on that. So it will send a response. But it's again a question. You have to make a choice on that so that it will again go to the uh, question and answering service and then final response comes. So because multiple times you are connecting with the Q&A service, it's called the multi-turn conversation or multi-turn exchange. So some questions, there is a, a single turn uh, conversation. So for example, how to switch on the TV? So how to switch on the TV? There is no need for asking which TV, right? So there is one TV product you have to answer. So you can simply answer or the agent can simply say to switch on the TV, you 
press on the power button. That's it. Right. That is a single turn conversation. But if you ask a questions, something like this, canceling a ticket or how to cancel the reservation. So there are different type of reservation. So you need to clarify which reservation. So it will ask you, are you asking about flight reservation or hotel reservation? So then you have to give a choice. Uh, accordingly, it will give you the final answer. That is called a multi-turn conversations. Testing and publishing a knowledge base. You can test interactively the knowledge base in the language studio itself because as we have seen in the, uh, I think the custom vision studio we have or custom vision.ai portal, we have trained the model with the images and then we have uh, tested there and then we deployed. Similarly, here also in the language studio also, after the training, you can test the model then and there itself. You can inspect the results to see the confidence score. So you, how you will verify whether it is trained successfully and it is providing the co correct answers, you have to verify the confidence score. So even it is not 100% sure, at least 80 plus uh, score has to come, right? 0 0.8 or more. Then we can say it is at least correct answer, right? So the confidence score is very, very important. 0 0.5, 0 0.4, all these are not acceptable because whenever we make a query, we have to get the accurate answer. The accuracy is defined by the confidence score. Add alternate phrases to improve the scores as necessary. So there are alternate phrases can be provided, which means, so maybe uh, uh, you can say, how to cancel the reservation. So reservation, we can change to bookings. So how to cancel the bookings. So that will give you more uh, accurate result because inside the documents, which is used as a knowledge base, there will be written bookings, how to cancel the booking of hotel or how to cancel the booking of a flight. So there it used the word booking. But when the customer asks how to cancel the reservation, so there will be a uh, confusion whether are you referring to booking or something else. But if you use the same phrase, uh, it will give uh, more clarity or you can uh, configure that uh, uh, booking is an alias name for reservation or reservation is an alias name for booking. So when you configure that and retrain the model, now the model will understand whether you uh, provide a reservation or booking because both are same. Publish the trained knowledge base as we saw in the custom vision service. After the testing is completed, we have to publish it. Once it is published, it is exposed using REST APIs or you can consume it using the uh, SDK, means programming libraries. So in the client applications, you will be providing the request, something like this. You can provide a question that what do I need to do to cancel a reservation? And uh, answers will come. You can say the score, the confidence score is low, like a 27.74. So answer is call us on triple five one two three four five six seven something like that, right? And again, it is uh, giving an answer. How can uh, how can I cancel a reservation? That is a sorry. That is a uh, question which is best matched with the question which you have asked because it may not be the same. That the question which is stored in the knowledge base and the question which is uh, which you have asked will be different. Different in the sense uh, uh, syntactically different, but contextual meaning can be same. Like, how can I cancel a reservation? That is the question which is there in the knowledge base. But you are asking uh, what I have to do to cancel the reservation. So contextually, the meaning is same. But the way you have used the words or uh, uh, framed the question is different. 
so it is giving the best matching question also as you can see that means when you asked it has given the answer for this question improving the question and answering performance uh, enable active learning to suggest alternatives when multiple questions have similar scores for user input implicit or explicit that active learning is means it uh, learns from the feedbacks or it can be uh, learned from uh, the responses that the user has given uh, uh, because the benefit is that it does not require a retraining every time because from the feedback it will be able to understand that this is a, a right choice or wrong one so it can be implicit or explicit the service identifies potential alternative phrases for questions and presents suggestions in the language studio periodically review and accept or reject the suggestions so that means it the model itself will understand that uh, there are some alternate uh, uh, questions uh, available for the given question so you can uh, accept those changes and or reject it depends because they are all auto uh, suggestion auto suggestions so you can accept or reject for that uh, questions and then uh, uh, it will improve the accuracy of this model explicit means the service returns multiple possible question matches to the user and the user identifies the correct one the client application then uses the api to submit the feedback items identifying the correct answer so explicitly the user needs to go and provide a correct answer for uh, the suggestions are you looking for this or this or this so you need to provide a correct answer for that or uh, the matching questions will be provided the user need to specify which question is correct um, or best to match one and another thing is create synonym for terms uh, with the same meaning. So that is what I said. Bookings and reservations will have a same meaning. So one way to improve the performance is providing the synonyms. Because we cannot expect that every user will ask for bookings. Some user may use uh, uh, what to say. Uh, reservations it depends on the uh, uh, country region language or the other things for example uh, in uh, india and uh, the uk we call it as biscuit but in uk or oh, sorry us it will be call it as cookies so if we are asking a question or we have trained the model in such a way that how to make a biscuit but if the same application is used by a us user he will be asking how to make a cookie so it will be it will not be able to understand what it is right because yes conceptually the cookie and biscuit are same but the uh, uh, system is not able to understand it correctly because the 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 cookie and biscuits are synonyms you can use it in that context right so while creating the uh, knowledge base it's always better to go through each and every question and wherever the synonyms can be applied you can use that also Okay, so that is uh, in the knowledge base, and uh, now I just I want to stop this module here because we have uh, discussed more about the language service, and I just want to cover one more module here, which is the uh, popular subject nowadays, which is the 
open AI, that is generative AI model. So now I just want to spend the remaining time on this module because uh, people may be more interested to understand about the open AI services or generative AI services uh, on the Azure platform. So let me try to finish this in quick time because I just want to quickly uh, cover this generative AI solution with the Azure Open AI because this is one of the hot topic nowadays. So what is generative AI and how we can build generative AI solutions with Azure? That is what this module covers because if this module is all about generative AI solutions uh, with the Open AI. So here it is primarily uh, talking about the Azure Open AI service, what it is and how to build the applications using Open AI and what is prompt engineering and how we can use custom data for uh, uh, grounding the open AI models. Since the time is less, I'll try to quickly cover this. As everyone knows, artificial intelligence is not a new term because it's there in the industry from many decades. And artificial intelligence will have different uh, variations like machine learning is one uh, subset of artificial intelligence, which is used to create some artificial intelligence models. So how we can create the intelligence applications that comes in the machine learning because machine learning is used for building uh, models, artificial intelligence models, typically used for some use cases, for example, language translation this is one use case i can say it's a machine learning model or i want to uh, do a prediction of uh, climate so that is only one uh, activity it does so it's a scope is very limited and it is not very complicated it is just analyzed some uh, or it is just trained with some fast data Based on that, it, some do, it do, does some calculations and provide the answer for that, right? So it's not a very complicated uh, AI service. But machine learning has a subset called deep learning, which is uh, used for more complex scenarios, like uh, text translations or uh, speech synthesis or the uh, image processing in such scenarios not a, just a simple process because the image has to be analyzed multiple times remove the unnecessary uh, uh, pixels and then identify the main objects inside the image okay and uh, extracting the informations about that particular object. So it's not a simple process. It has to uh, execute using multiple uh, uh, complex layers. So deep learning is typically used for complex uh, machine learning scenarios. So it's also part of the machine learning. So I can say deep learning is a part of machine learning. So every deep learning model is a machine learning model. But the typical machine learning models are uh, simple, but deep learning models are very complex and it contains multiple layers of neural networks. Mult multiple layers of neural networks that uh, simulates the human brain. So how the human brain is created with multiple neurons, the same way the uh, deep learning models also created with the neurons, but these are neurons that is uh, uh, programmatically created. It's not just, a, it's, it's a uh, what artificial intelligence neurons you can say, 
which is uh, uh, typically used for processing the data. So every uh, deep learning model will have may have multiple layers of uh, neural networks like a transformer model, uh, convolutional net uh, neural network that is CNN, a recurrent neural network like RNN, a variational autoencoders that is VAE or diffusion model uh, or the GAN generative uh, adversarial networks. So like there are different uh, deep learning models available and every deep learning model uses different architecture because they handle different types of data. They Some of them are used for handling text data. Some of them are used for handling image data. Some of them are used for handling the data in sequential. Some of them are uh, used for handling the data parallelly and like that. So how they operate is different. So we use uh, deep learning models for complex scenarios like a speech synthesis or image processing kind of thing. But if you see all these machine learning and deep learning models are just analyzing the data and giving some predictions or results. It will never create something new. What is trained based on that it can give you some suggestions or it can give you some predictions but it cannot create anything new but now we have a subset of deep learning which is called a generative ai that is capable for generating new fresh contents so that means now the artificial intelligence is capable to create fresh new data which is completely different from the trained data. Such artificial intelligence models we call as generative AI models and generative AI models became very popular a couple of years back when the open AI has introduced their uh, deep learning models like the GPT, DAL-E, embeddings, whisper and so on so these are some of the models created by the uh, open ai open ai is one of the research laboratory in us and they are now partnered with microsoft so they are now partnering with microsoft for providing uh, solutions so they uh, created lots of generative ai models and that uh, because of that now the other organizations like Google or Meta, they also started building generative AI solutions. So like uh, Google's Gemini or uh, Palm, then uh, Meta's Llama, all these are now uh, large language models which is capable for generating the results. So these open AI models like uh, GPT or uh, embeddings, DAL-E. So they are generative AI models, which means they are capable for generating new content. For example, uh, GPT is typically a text-based model, which means it is capable for uh, receiving text as an input and produce text output for example i can give an instruction uh, which is called a prompt i can give an instruction saying that can you create a poem for me then it will go and create a poem or i can say can you write a story about a monkey and elephant then it will write a story about monkey and elephant so that means you can give the instruction in the uh, text format and it is giving the output also in the text format but now the new version of gpt that is gpt4 is also supporting uh, images means it is now a multi-model model which means you can give the instructions in image format or files also you can upload a file and say that okay i want to summarize this document you don't need to give it as a text you can upload an excel file 
and you can say that okay go and create a pivot chart of this uh, sheet so it will go and do that okay so that means now it is support not only plain text but also the other types of inputs also dal e which is a image creation model and it is capable for creating the images from the text so you can just give an instruction can you draw an image of uh, an eagle catching fish from the sea it will go and draw the image for you so it's now used by bing right so if you i think you must be already aware and using it so here if you go to bing you can tell the model to do some operations or i can say create a poem about a baby let's see whether it will create or not so it's actually a search engine integrated with that can you see it's creating a poem right about a baby right so i can also tell draw an image of eagle catching fish from sea cloudy sky with storms uh, cinematic lighting let's see whether it will draw sometimes it will give the encoder textually yes you can see it is trying to draw the image see it's created that image right so nice image four variations it creates right so this is using the dal e which is the model you can see powered by dal e3 okay so this uh, is the image creation model provided by open ai and the text operations will be typically done using the gpt model gpt4 is used and if you see some of the uh, uh, ides now uses the code assistance like uh, you don't need to write the code for something you can just uh, tell the application to, uh, sorry the uh, ide to generate the code for you for example i am just trying to put a comment here write a code to uh, create a function that checks the given uh, array contains even numbers or not let's check whether it will do or not so you can see the function is created very simple now as a developer i don't need to do anything so the check even is the function so it automatically uh, extracted the function name also from the uh, comment so from the comment i'm passing uh, you can see which checks the given array contains so it's i'm passing an array from the array it takes one by one element and wherever it is uh, uh, containing the even number 
or no, not even number and it's performed. So you cannot go and use this code as it is. So you have to verify and validate whether it is correct because these are auto generated and you can use it for generating the test cases also. You can see test this function means it can generate the test case also automatically, right? And even there is uh, a code whisperer, which is the Amazon's uh, code generation, just something like a GitHub Copilot, which can be used for the same purpose. So I have used a couple of them, like a Codium is one, and a Code Whisperer is another one. GitHub Copilot is another one. So they are all using the GPT models, like Codex model, which is used for generating the code. Okay, because they are code assistants. So what I can do, I can also do, suppose if I have copied some code, into this and I don't know how it works. So what I can do, I can say send it to Amazon Q and tell explain this code. So we can see this is going to explain this code what this is going to do. The selected code block contains a function called a check event that takes an array called the ARR as parameter. The function iterate through each element and so and so right. So you can see it is the explanation of the function how it works so sometimes you copy the code from internet and you don't understand how it works you can what what you can do is you simply tell this code assistant tools to explain the code so it will simply do it for you so this is done by the amazon q that is the code whisperer service you can also do it through the uh, the other one what is that Podium. Here also the explain this code option available. See, it's also explaining, but in a different way. Right. So you can see different uh, code assistant tools available. They can generate the code for us. They can explain the code for us, and they even can generate the test cases for us so generate test which means it's generating the test right so that is possible so this is the power of generative ai so these generative ai models how we can use in azure so in azure if you want to use you have to go and make a, a special request to microsoft by submitting this form so for example if you want to use open ai in your azure subscription you have to go to this link and provide a request or submit a request for the open ai because open ai is not available for every azure subscription only on request you will get it if you want you can make a request and then it will be enabled inside your subscription. So you have to fill your first name, last name, then subscription ID, and what is a use case, your company name, and other things you have to fill. So once it is done, then only you will get this. Means that also it will take 24 hours to activate. Maybe minimum 24 hours it will take to enable that feature in your account. So once the Azure Open AI service is activated inside your subscription, you can simply create it using portal or using the command. So this using the Azure CLI command, you can create a service of type Open AI. Or using the portal, you can directly go and create an Azure Open AI instance. So the benefit of using Azure Open AI is it use the Open AI models only but it uh, provides some extra features like uh, using the infrastructure of uh, uh, Azure, providing additional security, uh, providing the content safety, then providing the network level security, right? So these are means providing the monitoring. So these are some of the additional features that Azure is adding on top of it. So 
models which are used is the traditional open AI model. There is no special models. Whatever open AI models available, you can use that, but they add some extra cloudy cloud features like uh, network level security or content safety or cloud infrastructure. Okay. So when you create the open AI, you can uh, open AI service, you can go to the Azure open AI studio, just like uh, the vision studio. Uh, you can have the open AI studio, which help you to test and try all the open AI functionalities like uh, uh, you can deploy a model like you want to deploy the GPT-4 model or GPT-3.5 model. You can deploy that model by using the deployment option. So what are the different models available? You can see here and you can go to the deployments and deploy an instance of that model. And then go to the chat section or the completion section to try out this. So this completion section is not available for uh, new models. Means if you are using GPT 3.5 or later versions, completion endpoint. Completion endpoint is not available because this completion endpoint is available only for the GPT 3 model. So any new versions you deploy, you can try this chat. So chat completion means you are making the request to the model in the form of a chat conversation. So that's the difference mainly. So okay. So any request you make to uh, the API or the model, it will be like a chat conversation history. And these are the models which are available. You can see GPT-4, which is the latest model, GPT-3.5 available, embeddings model available, which is used for generating the embeddings vector, uh, typically used for similarity search and text search. DAL-E, which is used for image generation. Deploying generative AI models. So that is an important and first step because after you create the open AI service, you cannot start using it because you have to first deploy an instance of uh, the model. So suppose if you are planning to use GPT 3.5, you have to go and deploy an instance of GPT model. So here you can see, you can do it through the portal. Then you from this drop down, you select the model and version, which version of this model, and what is the name of the deployment that you can specify. When you create, it is going to deploy a new instance of that particular model. Through the command also you can do, here you can specify the deployment name, model name, version name. Okay, so these are important parameters and you deploy it. Once it is deployed, you will be able to start using it. So you can use it for different purposes. What are the purposes? You can use it for classifying the content, which means whenever you give a content, for example, a news content when you give, this news content comes in which category? For example, is it an entertainment news or it's a environmental news or is it a political news? Is it a religious news? So what type of news it is that you can classify? So you can use the uh, GPT means open AI for classifying your uh, content. Generating new content, which means it is possible for us to generate new content, such as you can tell the model to write a poem, story, or something like that, or even uh, questions you can ask, or you can tell the model to write a blog. Anything can be created. Transformation and translation means text translations can also be done. So you can tell the model to translate from one format to, or sorry, one language to 
another language so it will tell you also it will translate easily summarization so that is another feature that it offers means it is uh, it is uh, 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 able to summarize the given uh, uh, content I mean suppose if you have a hundred lines of text which you want to summarize in just 10 lines you can tell the model to summarize it in just 10 lines you, it will do for you continuation means you want to write the continuation of a particular statement or a story like uh, once upon a time there is a king and then the remaining story the model will write so you just given only the starting point and the remaining story the completion it will do question and answering that is another thing it means you can ask a question and it will give you the answer for example you can ask how many moons are there for earth so it will give you an answer right so that is simple question and answer you can even do normal chatting so you can set the uh, message structure or you can uh, set the behavior of the agent and you can ask the agent to provide the answers okay so that means we can use this model for different purposes it's not for a single purpose that is why i said machine learning models are typically used for a single use cases but this can be used for different purposes this is what the completions playground and the chat completions playground can you see this is the completion and this is what the chat completion so the difference is in completion which is only supported in older models so whenever you deploy an older model you can select that older model name from here deployments select the older model name here text da vinci is the older model and you can just write the first line of this sentence and you can tell the model to complete it like write a pr proposal to adopt ai in business so it will write the remaining things for you okay and if you see the right side it's a chat playground it looks like a chat screen right so what is the difference is here you will be conversing with a virtual assistant so there is an assistant role exists so user will be asking some questions and assistant will be answering for that it looks like a chat conversation that's why it is called a chat completion so now we uh, have to go for the demo but unfortunately my subscription is disabled i cannot show the demo because of some poc i have done on that so its quota is exceeded so i cannot do that so we'll skip to the next one developing apps with the azure open ai so how you can connect to the open ai services as i have mentioned open ai provides different uh, uh, models and you can uh, uh, connect with these services for different purposes there are primarily three endpoints provided one is completion second is embeddings and third one is chat completion so completion is only available in the older models i said uh, i'm repeatedly saying this completion is only available in the older models if you deploy and it is used for completing the remaining text that you have given so you have given the starting text and it will be completing the remaining embeddings are typically used for generating the vector representation of a given text it means numerical representation of the given text chat completion is used as a conversational uh, model means you are conversing with a, a virtual assistant completions and embeddings if you want to use you have to use the uh, base models or old models but chat completion 
is available for new models like a GPT 3.5 Turbo or later versions. So here is an example for the uh, open AI's completion endpoint. So whenever you deploy an Azure open AI model, so you will see this will be the endpoint for that. And this is the deployment and here is the deployment name. So this deployment name is what we are we have discussed earlier. So you have to deploy a model. With a particular name, so that is a deployment name and slash completions, which means you are invoking the completions endpoint and you will be making a request in this format. So prompt equal to your favorite Shakespeare play is, which means this you are you stopped here. So it has to complete the remaining thing. So what is the remaining text? What is coming is the response is coming here as text equal to Macbeth. Can you see? So then the completion text will be what your favorite Shakespeare play is Macbeth, right? So that is what the completion, right? So completion is typically used to complete the remaining statement. And the embeddings is typically used like this. So you make a request to the embeddings URL to the deployment. So whenever you give a input text, it returns a embeddings vector. Can you see it returns an embedding vector, which is some numerical representation of your given text. This is primarily used for similarity search operations. And this is the chat completion endpoint. So you will be making request to this chat completion using chat slash completions where you can see it is like a chat conversation. The first one is the system message, which is typically used for setting the behavior of the assistant. So role equal to system, which means it's a system message. And what is the content of that? You are an assistant that teaches people about the artificial intelligence. So it is set to the behavior of the assistant that you are a teacher who teaches about the AI. And this is some examples of this conversation. As you can see, role equal to user and content equal to does Azure OpenAI support multiple languages? And the answer is given by the assistant. Assistant is saying, yes, Azure OpenAI support several languages. So this is an example which is called a few short learning example. So few short learning means you will be providing some example along with the prompt so that it, the model will be able to understand how to answer. So here you can see this is the actual prompt that you are providing a role equal to user means user is asking a question. What is that? Does other cognitive services support translation? So it is expecting an answer like this, yes or no. So it has to give a yes or no with an explanation, right? So you can see this, the, the example why I have given because I am expecting this format output. So whenever I ask a next question, I'm expecting the result like this. So here you can see, the role equal to assistant means assistant will give you an answer like yes, other cognitive services also support translation. Right. So this is what the chat completions API. So unfortunately, uh, we have to wind up here because of the time constraint. So I hope I have given you an idea about the Azure Open AI. So we will, uh, uh, once you go for the AI 102 certification, we will be covering the generative AI for one full day because it uh, contains some practicals also. Uh, there are six or seven modules 
which need to be covered in four days and and it's not practically possible to cover everything in one day so hope you can understand so here we need to wind up uh, the session so i just have given you an idea about what we are going to learn or what we learn in the ai 102 certification and uh, there are labs associated with for every module that are multiple labs associated with for each section right the resources will be available uh, once you register for the ai 102 certification the training key will be provided so you will get the uh, lab VM as well as the lab resources to do the hands on. So that's it from my side. So now if you have any questions, you can put your questions in the chat. Uh, hello guys, I shared the assessment link. So guys, uh, give your test and check your knowledge. It's a basic question. So start your test. You have 50 minutes to complete this. Uh, 